I was my mom's primary caregiver. I worked, but came and took care of my mom every day, every day, all the time. And at this point, mom was bed bound, and I knew that things were not good. And because of COVID, I could not get help. I called her doctor to come and see her. And she said, I'm sorry, Angela, we cannot come because of COVID. Then I was like, well, maybe I better send it to the hospital. So I called 911 and the paramedics came to the house and they said to me, if you send your mom to the hospital, mom will be alone. You cannot go inside with her. My mom had very bad Lewy body dementia and I've done everything for my mom. I've been her voice for five years that she's been ill and I was not sending her there by herself. And then that's when I decided I'm not sending her to the hospital. I need Calvary. Angela was beside herself by the time I walked in the door, crying, you know, I just need a hug. In our normal days, that's the first thing we would do is hug that family member. And I remember feeling awful behind the mask and the shield and thinking, thank God I'm wearing all this because she can't see my face. And I was in tears because that was the only thing I could not do. She came in and she looked at me and I was wiped out because two weeks of not having anyone to help you, to, to tell you what to do, I, I, I was just destroyed. And Kelly was like, okay, let's go see your mom. We didn't have a positive COVID test, we had what we called person under suspicion. Fever for two weeks, congested for two weeks, um, not eating for two weeks. That fit the, the criteria for a person under suspicion of COVID. So we, we had to maintain a specific uh, regimen of double masking and a face shield and a gown and gloves and social distancing and only touching patients when necessary, but trying to give the proper education that the family needed to provide the right care. At that point, Kelly said that mom was not ready to pass. She was on her way to pass, but she was not ready. She told me, I'll hold your hand the whole way, even if we have to do it virtually. And we did. I would take my camera and we would go on FaceTime and, you know, we would look at her mom's feet. We would, she'd put the phone near her mom so I could hear her breathing, you know, explain to her how to put the oxygen on, explain to her how to change the medication dosages. Anything that she needed, we were able to manage like I was in person until I could get there. And because of Calvary and because of Kelly, I was able to keep my mom home, to die in her own home with me, I'm sorry, instead of being in the hospital all by herself. There was never a question about whether we were going to care for a patient. We did it, we did it well. Uh, we did it really on the backs of our nurses though who were in the community. I and mean, at this point, we probably have taken care of close to 500 uh, COVID patients. It was exhausting emotionally, physically, but somehow, you know, you reach one patient and realize that you made a difference and they give you enough energy to pay it forward to the next patient, the next visit, the next day, the next hour, next week. And despite the frequency with which people were dealing with death and working with family members, our staff were resilient and they were able to re-energize and go on to the next patient and go on to the next family members. And they give a wonderful gift to patients to help make it happen that people are allowed to die at home. The dedication of the people who work for Calvary, it's not just a job, it's a, pa it's a passion. My mom would have been very, very, uh, very uh, happy with Kelly and with the decision that was made for the last eight days of her life. And I will never forget what they did for me. I'll never forget what Kelly did for me, and I'll never forget what Calvary as a whole has done for me.